All right, today our topic is going to be rectangles. Um, the objective will be I will learn to prove and apply properties of rectangles. We're going to start with defining what a rectangle actually is. Um, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. Um, nothing new here. It should just be a rectangle, and you have four angles that are 90 degrees. Okay. Now, because a rectangle is a special type of parallelogram, it has all the properties of a parallelogram. That's what you learned uh, when you were watching 6, 2, and 6, 3. We combined those two properties, or those two lessons for 6, 2, 6, 3. Um, properties of a parallelogram. Um, except for a rectangle, it's going to have an extra property. Uh, one more thing that we can look at. Um, the diagonals of a rectangle have an additional special relationship. So remember that the diagonals go from one vertex to the opposite vertex. So here, um, from O to M, that would be one diagonal. The other diagonal is going to go from L to N. Okay. Now we're going to find the length of these diagonals. And for this, I'm going to kind of use Pythagorean theorem. We can use the distance formula, but I want to use Pythagorean theorem because, it, again, one of the properties of a rectangle is that that angle right there is 90 degrees. So if I count this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this side has a length of 7, and this side has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is 10. All right, so the distance from O to M, that's going to be our hypotenuse. So C squared is going to equal to 7 squared plus 10 squared, okay, which is going to be 49 plus 100. So C squared is equal to 149. C is going to be equal to the square root of 149. Okay. Now, um, let's do the same thing with ln. So if I ignore this side, and I have this bottom right triangle, okay, we already talked about this length being 7. Um, because it is a rectangle, this on right here is going to have a length 10. All right, so obviously om, or excuse me, ln, is going to equal 7 squared plus 10 squared. Okay, notice that that's the same equation um, for our c squared. Okay, since these are the same, okay, that's the new property. Uh, if it's a parallel, if the parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. All right, um, now we're going to kind of review real quick. Um, these first five properties, opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonals uh, bisect each other. These are the first five properties or conditions um, that made this parallelograms. Okay, but now all seven of these are for rectangles. Okay, so again, these first five are apply only to parallelograms. If they're rectangles, it's all five plus these um, two more, six and seven. So just to kind of quickly review and diagram on the picture, opposite sides are parallel. Okay, that would be these arrows here. Opposite sides are congruent. That would be that. Opposite angles are congruent, so that would mean this angle here is congruent to this angle here. That angle, these, this is another angle pair that's congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So if I called this angle 1 and say angle 2, this would mean the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. Diagonals bisect each other. So this side here would be congruent to this side here. 
and this diagonal would be congruent there, or be bisected. Um, four right angles. So we could say if this is angle one, two, let's call this three and four. That would mean angle one is congruent to angle two, congruent to angle three, and congruent to angle four. They all happen to equal 90 degrees. Okay, The diagonals are congruent, which is what we talked about up here. That would be another thing we could say OM is congruent to LN. Okay, so that's how all seven, these are all seven properties unique. All right, so now we're going to look at some examples to kind of apply these properties to rectangles. So we know that MNOP is a rectangle. So that should kind of list those seven things we just talked about. Um, and then it says MO is 2X minus 8. And NP, go in this direction, that is 23. All right. So find the value of x. Well, MO and NP are diagonals, so we know that diagonals are congruent. So maybe we should write that diagonals are congruent. So that's going to mean that 2x minus 8 is equal to 23. If I add 8 to both sides, that's going to give me 31. And then I divide by 2, x is going to be 15.5. And we'll call that units. Next example. Okay, we've got another rectangle. I know LP is 3x plus 7. And MK is 26. That's going to be the whole thing. And we want to solve for x. Well, MK is the whole diagonal. And our property says that the diagonals are congruent. So if this part is 3x plus 7, then this side is going to be another 3x plus 7. So one way to do this would be to have 3x plus 7 plus another 3x plus 7 and set that equal to 26. So that's going to give us 6x plus 14 is 26. Subtract 14 from both sides. Gives us 12. Divide by 6, x is going to be 2 units. Okay, next example 3. Another rectangle AC, that's the whole diagonal, that's going to be 4x minus 13. Alright, and then DP, just kind of draw these so that it goes all the way across. DP is going to be x plus 7. Again, that's kind of the mid-segment. So I know this side over here is going to be x plus 7 as well. So I have two x plus 7s, because there's two of them, DP and BP. That's got to equal 4x minus 13. Same idea, I'm going to have to distribute 2x plus 14 is equal to 4x minus 13. I subtract 2x, it's going to give me 2x over here. All right. Add 13 to both sides, it's going to give me 27. Divide by 2, x is going to be 13.5 units. Right. Okay, now we're going to do some stuff with the angles. Uh, rectangle, we've got to find the given information. I know angle 1 is 70 degrees. Okay, Because it is a rectangle, that means this angle here is 90 degrees. So for angle 2, 90 minus 70 is going to give me 20. So I know angle 2 is 20 degrees. Okay, other thing I know is that angle 7 is 20 degrees. So same idea here, I'm going to find angle 8. You don't have to go in order. I don't have to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm just going with the information that is given to me. So if this is 20, that means 80 or angle 8 is going to be 90 minus 20, which is 70. Okay. Now, uh, because these lines are parallel, 
That means alternate interior angles are congruent. So if angle 1 is 70, angle 5 is going to be 70. Which would make angle 6 going to be 20. Again, that would be 90 minus 70. All right, and then if I'm looking at what I can solve next, um, angle 8 and angle 4, those are going to be alternate interior angles also. So if 8 is 70 degrees, 4 is going to be 70 degrees. Right, and which means 3 is going to be 90 minus 70, which is 20. All right, now I have to do these things in here, 9 and 10. Uh, but notice that if I kind of look at my lines here, this is going to form the triangle, triangle K, C, N. And if both of these are 20, that means for angle 9, um, I could do 20 plus 20 plus the measure of angle 9. Those three have to equal 180. Okay, so 20 and 20 make 40. All right, if I subtract 40 from 180, the measure of angle 9 is 140. Okay, so this one's 140 degrees. All right, and these two are going to be vertical angles. So if angle 9 is 140 degrees, angle 10 is going to be 140 degrees. Vertical angles. Okay, last example for today. Um, quadrilateral RST, let's see, the measure of angle RSU, so RSU, so that's this angle right here, that's going to be 3x minus 5, and angle UST, so if I go UST, that's this angle right in here, that's going to be 4x plus 4. Okay, well that is this angle together. Um, because it's a rectangle, I know those two angles have to add up to 90 degrees. So that's going to be 3x minus 5 plus 4x plus 4 equals 90. All right, combine like terms, 7x minus 1 equals 90, which means 7x is going to be equal to 91. And if I divide by 7, that tells me that x is 13. 